it's bonus video time. Every once in a while when I have a lot of leftover footage from Living History, I'll be putting out a bonus video before footnotes. With the Dion Quintuplet story, there was a lot of amazing scenes at Quintland where it all happened, so I'm going to take you back there now. Natasha's got some old photographs and she's going to show us how things have changed in the area in the last 80 plus years. Take a look. What the perspective we're looking at here is here and here are the two gate posts since you're there and there. And so what you're doing is this fence here is this fence. In front of this building was later on built a clock tower souvenir shop. It's got a big clock tower on it. Um, I do have an image of it. That clock tower is that original house. This building here was the staff house. That white building, that's the original staff house. And so then next to it, you've got the gateway here, gate, and then that nursery. So the nursery would have been here. And the observation thing, horseshoe playground, was back in there. Just out of sight here is that souvenir shop I talked about, which again would be that blue house. Oh yes, that was the <laughs> iconic photo, famous yeah. Famous photo. So again, we've got the gate and the gate, the posts. So we're on the other, like this is on the inside. But yeah, again, looking down, you've got that barn where again, right back here in the background is, is where that building would be. And so basically right at the start of the gate here, a little bit down is where this first souvenir shop, and this is one of the first souvenir shops, Madame Le Gros and Madame La Belle, the two midwives would have run, where you can stand up top and take a look. This is before the observatory is built though. This, they're running to see the nurses hold them up on the porch. And that little shack is the, um, the guard shack that we're the OPP, we're on guard 24 seven. And it sat right at the entrance to the gates here. This is the same shot, but a few years later. So I talk about the souvenir shop, that's it there. That is the original building of this shop. The barbed wire fence that was put up in 1937-ish or so. There's actually, there was one little string of barbed wire that was still on it. I don't know if it's been taken off now or not. <laughs> yeah, actually, I think that that's probably it. So right here um, was one of the exit gates. And so that gate there would have been that exit gate. Right here is an entrance and that's where everybody would line up. And so they would enter and go here and kind of come along like this enter in, half of the group would split and come through this way and exit. Half the group would actually go all the way around and come out the back here and then swing around and they would end up exiting out of this gate. So this gate here is that where the no trespassing sign is. So, so, so it's a big double gate to allow for more. And then the exit gate is on this kind of this big rock. That big rock is right there, kind of behind where the tree is. So they would exit there. So you would line up here you go in, do your thing, come out, exit out of the gate. Or if you turned right, you'd go in and you'd swing all the way around and you'd come up this rock and come back here. So right now we're standing where all these people sit and where three million people once walked. There's not that much to see at Quintland these days and it is next to people's homes so I don't really want it to become a major tourist hub. However, if you are in the area, I do recommend that you take a quick drive past. If you want to see some amazing artifacts and hear more stories about the Dion Quintuplets, you should check out the Calendar Bay Heritage Museum. They have a fantastic exhibit about all things quintuplets, and they were a huge help to me when I was putting this video together. Here's what a bit of that exhibit looks like. So this is the uh, Calendar Museum, uh, the home of Dr. Defoe. Uh, he moved in here in 1914, and he lived here until he died in 1943. Uh, a couple families lived here after, and then in 1979, the building was turned into a community museum and opened officially in 1982 and excitingly this uh, this August 2022 we're celebrating 40 years of being open as a museum. This is our barber shop that has nothing to do with the quintuplet story but it's pretty cool. The barber basically started our museum and the Defoe homestead was chosen as a location due to its association with the story and they literally donated the barber shop. They took it right out, stuck it here, the mirror, the sinks, everything is all original and it dates back to the 1920s. So this is our uh, quintuplet exhibit, uh, two decent sized rooms, all filled with everything from photos to memorabilia, souvenirs, uh, very unique one of a kind artifacts, uh, clothing owned by the girls, worn by the girls, as you can see in these photos. 
advertisements. The girls were heavily, uh, heavily exploited by multiple ver and, uh, various companies. Everything from Colgate, Quaker Oats, Palm Olive, uh, General Motors, uh, Electrolux. Uh, even Walt Disney got a, got in on it. However, they did this short on Pluto and his quintuplets, not the quintuplets. And as the words Dion quintuplets, Dion quins, quints were kind of trademarked by the Board of Guardians, so people couldn't use those names like legally without having to pay royalties. Kind of wonder, did Walt Disney pay royalties because was Quinn Puplets one of the words that was trademarked? We don't really know. So when the girls were first born, Madame Legros, uh, one of the midwives there that night, and aunt to Alzir Dion, the mother, went across, uh, went across the road to her home and grabbed a butcher basket when the babies were being born, and all five of them fit in this basket. Uh, the next day, they found a bigger basket that the girls were then transferred to. But this basket is quite significant in that it was the first in the original and it's signed on the side by the parents and Madame Legros kind of authenticating it. And, you know, when the girls were first born, they fired up the oven, they opened the oven door, put the chair down and put that basket on the chair to keep them warm. And actually Madame Legros had that in her souvenir shop for, uh, for years later and tourists would actually snap pieces of it off to take home and so she had to build a, a display case for it, which is why pieces are missing. <laughs> Yeah, so we have a little wall of our of Hall of Fame in a sense of celebrities that came to visit because not only were the, you know, the quintuplets were so popular, everybody was coming to see them, but the doctor was very famous as well. And so they were, these celebrities were here in this museum. So Jimmy Stewart was here with his wife. Uh, Betty Davis arrived. Mae West, we actually have a note signed by Mae West that says, come up and see me sometime, as was her trademark. Amelia Earhart, the aviator, she was here and she actually disappeared 10 weeks later. So Calendar was one of the last places that she was. Uh, Greta Garbo, James Cagney, Dennis Morgan, Spencer Tracy. I mean, you can almost name any celebrity and they likely came. These are just the ones we can confirm based on either photographs or looking at old guest books from the time that they would have signed. I'm going to leave it there so I don't spoil the whole museum, but it's seriously worth checking out. You might also be interested in visiting the birth home of the Dion Quintuplets. It's right downtown in North Bay and there's a museum there as well. I'll be back here next week with our footnotes video for the Dion quintuplets. In the meantime, please check out the other two episodes of Living History. Please leave a comment, like, subscribe. It really helps other people find this series. Until then, be well.